So this is where we left at the end of part two. Be trying to get rid of the bulk of wood. We're going to use the skill saw to cut where I'm showing here, chop them down, and then hopefully chisel out the chunks, get rid of big lumps of wood before we start the fine engraving. So here I am, faffing around the skill saw, trying to get it set to the right depth. Cut through. These first cuts are all about the same depth, so I don't have to faff around, change the skill saw each time. Yep, you can see that goes through. I don't need to be exactly to the line, because um, I'm going to just... Oh, that one's pissed. Uh, yeah, anyway, I don't need to be exactly to the line, because I'm going to be shaping it afterwards. Quick demo here of how I'm going to remove blocks. Uh, brick bolster, hammer, smack the wood, snap along the grain. Real easy. Well, I'll do, I'll do a couple here just to show you, but then I'm going to go back and cut all the slots first, and then remove all the wood afterwards. As you can see, the wood snaps easily, and you're left with a fairly clean end result. Here you can see after I finished the first side, and notice the cut depth match that of the profile of the seahorse. So, on to the other side. So, the other side's completed. Time to knock out the wood. You can see a bit there that's left over. That's because there's a big knot on the other side. But the rest of it just comes out easy. Bang, bang, bang. Really easy way to remove it. Seems strange to use a brick bolster to chisel wood, but it's what works. Let's stand it up and see what we've got. Well, looks a bit like a seahorse. Uh, just one thing to note, it's a really hot day here, so I am wearing the safety sandals. Uh, those are steel toe cap safety sta sandals. Safety is always paramount. Anyway, uh, yeah, there's the seahorse. Um, next, we're going to try and shape it properly. We'll see what that one looks like. I joked about the safety equipment earlier, the safety sandals, and now I'm wearing a beaded mask. This uh, cuts all shaping dish really does kick out some dust. <laughs> the wife just comes along to clean the garage. Anyway. Take your time, and you can't uncarve wood, so be careful what you take off. Okay, this bit's speeded up, but even so, it's relatively quick to get on rid of a lot of wood. You can smooth stuff out, get rid of all those rough edges, stop it looking like it's a pixelated piece of wood, and make it smooth. Take your time, step back every now and then to look what you're doing. You can't uncarve wood, so if you chop the wrong bit out, you're going to lose it. Okay, take your time and enjoy. So here's a smooth that shape of the seahorse. Now I'm just using a marker pen to rough in the design. I want to put some cuts in, give the seahorse a six pack. So this is just showing me where to put those cuts. It's a rough guide, I'm going to do it by eye anyway. Using the pen marker as a guide, I cut away those ridges, distinctive ridges that make a seahorse look like a seahorse. Um, this is not the final cut. I'm not going very deep here. I just want to make sure that my basic design works. Again, you can't uncarve, so it's much better to do little bits and then repeat and correct as you go along. And here we have the first cut of the seahorse. I haven't done the tail because the angle grind is too coarse to get there, too big to get in there. But as you can see, it's got a reasonable level of detail. Still lots of dents and scratches. This is going to take a lot of finishing. That nose is going to have to come thinner. I say the tail is going to find a smaller drill to do. But overall, I'm happy with that. So. Let's see what part three brings.